Field work to collect plants involves a huge amount of work, not just when you are physically in the field, but the preparation time in dealing with paperwork, permits and permissions. It can also be an expensive process, so it is critical to get things right first time round. It is now standard practice to collect material that can be used for DNA investigations at the same time as you make herbarium specimens. DNA degrades very quickly after picking, so it's really important we preserve it as quickly as possible to maintain DNA quality. One of the most tried and tested methods is using silica gel desiccant. There are different ways to collect and store material in silica gel. The method that most of our researchers at the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh use is the tea bag method. This method usually provides DNA that is of high enough quality for modern molecular research. Keeping the DNA high quality is a major concern. It can be the difference between success and failure in the lab. It is also a pragmatic solution to dealing with problems with handling and reusing silica gel and the way we store and curate our dried plant tissue. In this video, we're demonstrating the tea bag method. The tea bag method has been developed over several years using a combination of scientific research and trial and error. There are several different types of tea bags available. The ones that we use um, have these folds in them, which when you turn over, minimizes the risk of losing plant material. Some people also use coffee filters. The most important thing is that they're breathable. Silica gel comes in two forms, either as a white powder or as self-indicating beads. Here we use a mixture of both, usually in a three to one ratio. The silica gel beads change color when they're hydrated, in this case, orange to yellow. Some people use the blue beads, which turn from blue to pink when hydrated. This tends to be a bit more toxic, so we tend to use the orange beads. The most important thing is that when they do change color, it's time to replace the silica gel. Silica gel, in particular the white powder form, can be an irritant to your skin and the respiratory system, so it's good, if possible, to use gloves, a mask, and use in a ventilated area. Scientific studies have to be reproducible. In order to do that, we need to include enough specific information in our studies so that other people can reproduce and test our results. In order for this to happen, we collect herbarium specimens along with the silica dried material. This reference material allows us to confirm identifications of the plants that have been sequenced and also allows others to check this. This means our results are more likely to be accepted for publication. It's also really useful to have detailed information about the collection. So it's information such as collection number, date, scientific identification, collector, locality, including GPS locality if possible, general notes on the plant itself, and whether DNA has been collected or not. In order that the information can be traced and not confused with other collections, each specimen needs a unique identifier. This is usually in the form of a collection number associated with the collector name. It is very important that the herbarium and silica dried material are given the same collecting number so that they can be clearly linked to each other. Where possible, the silica gel sample and the voucher collection must come from the same individual plant. The collection number linked to the voucher must be securely linked to the silica dried material. If silica dried material arrives with no collector number because it has been lost or the collector mistakenly thought they would remember what it was, it is useless for scientific purposes. DNA starts to degrade as soon as you collect plant material, so it's really important you dry it as quickly as possible. That's why it's important to take a container with silica gel into the field with you. That means that you can collect a plant, put it in your tea bag, and put it into the silica gel as soon as you can. In most cases, the plant material we collect are leaves. When choosing a leaf, try and pick one that's young, that looks healthy and doesn't have things growing on it. When you collect a leaf, rip it into small pieces, roughly about one centimeter, but it could be smaller if it's really thick, waxy leaf because that'll help it dry quicker. If there's a thick midrib, just take it off and discard it. Rip it into small pieces and then put it in your tea bag. It's important to estimate how many collections you're going to make when you're going into the field because that allows you to work out how much silica gel to take into the field with you because it's really important that the plants are covered in silica gel as soon as possible. Keep an eye on the silica gel indicator because when that changes colour, the gel is saturated and it won't be drying the plant. At that point, you have to replace the silica gel. It's important not to overfill your tea bag with leaf material because that means that the leaf material won't be in close contact with the silica gel and it won't dry out very quickly. If you do need lots of leaf material, collect it in several tea bags. You have to make sure that they all have the same number and you make a note of how many duplicate tea bag collections you've made. Once you've collected your leaf material, put your unique identifier 
number into the tea bag. Fold it and then you can add it to your silica gel. Give it a good shake and then that means it's started to dry already. Once your tea bag's in the silica gel, it's important that every hour or so just to gently turn it so it's in contact with the fresh silica gel. When you're working in a humid environment, make sure you always keep the container tightly closed to keep the silica gel and the plant material dry. The end of a day's field work, you take your tea bag from your field silica gel and put it into a sealable container containing fresh silica gel. That means you can dry this for the next day's use. One of the benefits of the tea bag method is that if the silica gel becomes hydrated, you can just replace it very easily, hassle-free. The plant material should be dry within 24 hours. You can test that. It sounds crispy when you press it. And there is still moisture in it, so it's important that you keep it in the sealable container with silica gel and check the indicator gel regularly. When you're travelling home, if you don't want to travel with lots of silica gel, you can actually take the tea bags, put them into a sealable Ziploc bag, uh, and take them back to your home institute. The most important thing is as soon as you get back to your home institute, put them back in a sealable container containing silica gel. Back at your home institute, the tea bag should be transferred for long-term storage. We use low humidity cabinets, but an airtight container with fresh silica gel will be just as effective. Store the container in a cool, dark, dry area. Any remaining silica gel should be checked regularly and replaced if the indicator gel shows that moisture is present. If the material has been dried quickly and is maintained in a dry state, then you should be able to extract lots of good quality DNA from your collections, which can be used in a range of traditional and next generation applications.